It is Wednesday, July 27th, and you were listening to another edition of the 5-Minute Morning episode here on the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast. I am Blair Angulo, joined by National Recruiting Analyst, the Director of Recruiting for 24-7 Sports, Mr. Steve Wolfong. And Steve, the recruiting period has reopened. We are past another dead period, and there's a big name out there that is making a lot of noise. That would be quarterback Austin Novosad, the longtime Baylor commit who continues to draw attention from a number of college programs. What What's the latest on the Elite 11 finalist? Yeah, Blair, good morning. And I talked about Austin Novosad some on Wilfong's Whip Around on Tuesday's edition, so you can get that and a lot of other recruiting information there on the 24-7 Sports YouTube platform. Hit that like button. But the Dripping Springs Texas standout is at Notre Dame on Tuesday, and Notre Dame is trying to make a late charge for the longtime Baylor commit. Novosad has been in the fold for Baylor since December. The jewel of a class that ranks number 14 nationally, coming off a Big 12 championship and New Year's Six Bowl victory. I'd still think Baylor is the one to beat for Austin Novosad. Now, Blair, there was a time where I thought he was close to flipping to Ohio State, so this recruitment could still remain fluid. And he's at Notre Dame on Tuesday. Notre Dame is the last program to offer him a scholarship. He got offered on July 11th by the, by the Irish. And since he was offered, uh, talking to his family, they say Austin's been talking to the representative of Notre Dame almost every day, whether that's Marcus Freeman, the head coach, offensive coordinator Tom Reese. He's talked to professors. He's talked to enough people that he wanted to get up there and see it for himself. So he's up there on Tuesday, going to spend the entire day up there getting a feel for Notre Dame in person. I think that they have some ground to make up, but they're obviously in the mix for Austin Novosad coming into that visit. Again, I talked about Ohio State, uh, their track record, his relationship with Corey Dennis. He's put Ohio State in the middle of that one. He visited twice in June, including an official visit. He earned his, his offer in camp, then returned for his official visit. Like I said, I thought there was a time where the Buckeyes had the momentum, but I think that Baylor – I, I, I think it's back with Baylor. But then you also have Texas A&M, Blair. And he's expected to be at Texas A&M on Friday. He also visited them in the summer. Texas A&M offered earlier this month. He's an Aggie's legacy. Both of his parents went to school in College Station. Uh, they offered in late June, excuse me. That's the program that he's been keeping a – it's the program he's been keeping a keen eye on his whole life. Jimbo Fisher, the trajectory of that program, talking to him at the Elite 11 Finals. He, was, he said to me, look, if I were to go to Texas A&M, by the time I was ready to be the starting quarterback there, um, have some terrific pieces around me. So um, I, I think that A&M is an intriguing one to keep an eye on as well. He's going to be at Baylor on Saturday, and then we'll see after that visit if he decides to shut down the process or if he needs more time. It, it's really interesting that you mentioned Ohio State, you mentioned Notre Dame, two programs right now that have high caliber commitments in the 2024 class. Dylan Rayola, the number one prospect in the 24 class, committed to the Ohio State Buckeyes. You got CJ Carr, who committed to Notre Dame in the 24 class as well. It seems like both of those schools want to be able to stagger recruits at the quarterback position, and, and they're making a push here. Do you envision both of them making a charge to try to land a quarterback in this 2023 group? Absolutely. They both are definitely going to try and land a quarterback in this class. And if Ohio State doesn't land Austin Novosad, maybe it's Brock Glenn. If Notre Dame doesn't flip Austin Novosad, maybe they try and flip Kenny Minchie, who we saw at the Elite 11 Finals, who's committed to Pitt. Now, that doesn't mean I'm putting Kenny Minchie on flip watch. I'm just talking about who Notre Dame could take a swing at. I think Notre Dame has to take a quarterback, in my opinion. I don't think that their room – they need to continue adding as many talented people to that room as possible until they get the caliber of player in that room consistently year in and year out. They need to take that next step as a program. This Notre Dame, they've made the college football playoff two of the last four years. Um, uh, but this, it's a program that under Brian Kelly that had so much success. They've won 10 games five years in a row. I think you know, Ian Book just got drafted, but – Putting Ian Book up against, you know, Bryce Young and Trevor Lawrence and C.J. Stroud. And, you know, if you're Notre Dame, you're trying to get your C.J. Stroud. You're trying to get your first-round caliber guy. Uh, and maybe Tyler Buckner will develop into that. He's a, he's a young guy. But I think they need to load up behind him. They got Steve Angeli in the last class, uh, and they certainly need one in this class. And then they got C.J. Carr coming who's got a ton of ability. And then for Ohio State, 
that depth chart could get pretty thin real quick. I'm not saying it's going to. I'm not, that's not a prediction, but you got to prepare for it, right? C.J. Stroud, we're expecting this to be his last year. Then you're going into a quarterback competition with Kyle McCord and Devin Brown. I think you're good depth-wise. If if uh, well, you're not even good depth-wise off the top of my head. Anyway, like you need a quarterback in this class. You need another guy. You need a third scholarship guy. I'm not, I'm not forgetting someone, am I? I don't think I am. They got Kyle. No, I, I think you're you're just outlining basically that that these programs need to be able to set them up for the future in case there is a transfer. We could because we see that a lot at the quarterback position. Exactly, and but Kyle McCord, if he wins the job, I think you're you're good from a number standpoint. If you get a quarterback in this class, you have three on scholarship. Um, but say Devin Brown wins the job, you definitely need a quarterback. Hell, you might even have yeah. to go on the portal and get some depth. You know, and, and uh, I'm not saying how oh, maybe Kyle McCord would still stay at that point, but um, that's all. That's all. Uh, uh, um, what's the word, Bl uh, Blair? That's speculation all, uh, and hypotheticals and, and all that. But stuff. Ohio, it's yeah. not. It's not speculation that Ohio State needs a quarterback in this class, and they have a standard in that room. Guys that can come in and push the other guys, and Austin Novosad and Brock Glenn are two guys that they think can come in there and compete and push that room and. Look, guys that pick Ohio State, guys that pick Alabama, guys that pick programs like that, they're betting on themselves. They know they're walking into talented position rooms across the board. And uh, But if they can earn the starting job, it's right there for the taking for all their dreams as a football player. Ohio State, hell, yeah. if you're the starting quarterback for Ryan Day, you have a 100% chance of being a first-round draft pick. Yeah, I mean the track record is there, and obviously that way that, that that's what makes Ohio State right now at the quarterback position, at receiver, along the defensive line. Uh, it, it's one of those attractive destinations for recruits, and a lot of the quarterbacks have been coming off the board. Uh, but the dominoes continue to tumble, and and we're going to see maybe some movement here as Austin Novosad continues to assess his options. Sounds like Baylor's still in the driver's seat. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Good morning. All right, that is Steve. Hey, y'all. That is Steve Wilfong, the director of recruiting for 24-7 Sports. You can catch all the latest in college football recruiting over on 24-7 Sports as well as the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. We've got a big weekend ahead uh, as the recruiting period has reopened. For Steve Wilfong and our producer, Lance Glenn, I am Blair Angulo. Thank you so much for listening to this edition of the 5-Minute Morning on the 24-7 Sports Football Recruiting Podcast.